Hi, so today we are talking about the work in chapter 20. We are talking about the concept of ecology. Now ecology is just the interaction or the exchange between organisms and their environment. Living things take things from their environment but they also give things back to their environment. For example, an animal eats uh, grass from its environment but when it dies, it returns back into the environment. So understand all the different concepts and definitions here. Know what is a habitat. You can think of it as a home for an organism. Know what is a community and a population. And also the larger scheme of things, which is the ecosystem, which involves non-living materials such as ground, dirt, water. The ecosystem is basically everything in a specific area. Now organisms live inside these ecosystems and each organism has a specific role that it plays in the ecosystem. For example, some animals will keep the grass short, other animals will prey on these animals to make sure that they don't um, become overpopulated and eat all the grass so that there's no grass left at all. Now these roles are called niches and it is basically the role that an organism plays in its immediate environment. Now one thing that you might not know is that energy flows through us, but not in the way that you think, not in a sci-fi sort of electricity way. Energy flows through us uh, by means of food, what we eat and what we put back out into the environment. Now most of the energy comes from the sun. Imagine the sun as this like infinite supply of energy. This energy reaches the earth through light rays. The energy is then absorbed by green photosynthesizing plants. These plants are able to capture that energy, to harness it, to make carbohydrates, to make sugars and things that contain this light energy in a um, physical form. So if you think about it, it's actually pretty cool. When we eat a plant, we are actually eating sunlight. How crazy is that? Now it's important to note that when energy gets captured, not all of it can be captured. The plant can't capture all of the sun's energy. Some of the energy is reflected back out into space, other energy gets refracted. The concept here is that the plant can't catch all of the sun energy, it's impossible. So if the sun had to give out 100% energy, the plant would be able to capture maybe 50% of that energy and produce carbohydrates and proteins and fats from the energy captured. Now when an animal eats this plant, well, some energy is again lost because the animal doesn't eat the whole plant and the animal is not always super efficient to um, absorb and assimilate all of the energy from the plant into its own body. So again, we've got a little bit of a loss of energy here. And when a bigger animal preys on this animal, again, energy is lost because again, some food is being wasted. The animal's digestive system is not as efficient um, to uh, absorb and assimilate all of the energy. So we lose quite a bit of energy as we go up what's called trophic levels. The trophic levels work like this. We've got our producers at the bottom and they are green plants. They produce energy from sunlight. The next level is our primary consumer. So for example, cows and animals that eat plants. We are also primary consumers because we also eat plants. Then we've got secondary consumers. These are animals that prey on primary consumers. So these animals eat primary consumers and not producers. Now we are primary consumers because we eat plants, we're secondary consumers because we eat other animals. And now, if you remember what I previously said about energy, energy is lost as we go up these trophic levels. So to compensate for this loss, nature has developed this system. There are always more organisms on the primary lower levels of these trophic levels because then there will always be a high amount of energy at the bottom and as you go up energy is lost a little by little but there's not that many organisms at the top that are your tertiary consumers so energy is kept in balance. That is one of the reasons why vegetarianism and veganism is becoming so popular because people have realized this and if we go back to eating most of our foods from the primary consumer level, we are wasting a lot less energy. All these big factory farms that breed all these cattle for meat consumption have a big 
detrimental impact on the environment because they contain so many high level consumers on a specific piece of land, primary producers, the plants can't keep up with all these cattle eating the grass all the time and eventually the grass all dies and then other problems such as erosion and things like that become a big problem. If you're eating most of your food from the primary consumer level, you're helping to make the world a more energy efficient place. So let's take a look at nutrient cycles. So as I said before, animals take from the environment but they also have to give back to the environment. They take food from their surroundings such as grass, the cow will eat the grass, eventually the cow has to die and when it does so it starts decomposing and all the nutrient molecules inside of its body is released back out into the environment. But this can only happen with the help of decomposers, they help to break down these dead animals or dead plants. And two important molecules that need to be released back into the environment are carbon and nitrogen. Carbon forms a backbone structure of many chemical compounds. Without carbon, protein, fat, carbohydrates can't, just can't exist. So when an animal dies, these decomposers, which are often fungi or bacteria, help to release this carbon back into the environment. They break it down in such a way that they take up the carbon themselves and they are able to release it back out into the environment so that it can be used again. So it's actually a type of recycling if you think about it. Next we take a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is extremely important when it comes to making proteins. Now it's quite interesting because the air around us contains so much nitrogen. However, this is nitrogen that's not in a usable form. Nitrogen first needs to be converted into a usable form. So how does this conversion take place? Well, it takes place through lightning. When there's a thunderstorm and lightning strikes, the lightning changes the nitrogen in the air to a usable form called nitrogen oxides. These nitrogen oxides get washed down into the ground with the rain where they are converted into nitrates. These nitrates are usable. There's an artificial way of fixing nitrogen and this is what they this is how fertilizers are made. They take nitrogen and they make it into ammonium. The natural way that this occurs is through the use of bacteria. There's bacteria in the soil and these bacteria take the nitrogen from the air and they absorb the nitrogen and combine it with other substances to make ammonium ions and other nitrogen compounds. These nitrogen compounds are then in a usable form. Now there's also decomposers and when an animal dies, these decomposers, which are often bacteria, break down the protein containing nitrogen when an animal dies. Other organisms called nitrifying bacteria then turn this into nitrites. Now let's talk about population size. The planet has been experiencing a massive growth in population over the last couple of years and this is becoming concerning to scientists. Let's take a look at how population grows. When growth starts initially it's called the lag phase. This is where growth starts to occur slowly. There's not a lot of growth but yet there is some increase in growth. Now when a population can access its resources better such as us today, we've got all these amazing farms that produce a lot of food for us. The population is able to start growing more rapidly and this is called the exponential or log phase. This is where our population really shoots up, population increases really really fast over a short period of time. But then there becomes a stage where food becomes more expensive or more scarce because resources are being depleted due to this large increase in population. And then the population reaches a lag phase where the birth and the death rates start to balance each other out and the population size is maintained. However, when the stage is reached where all the resources is used up, a population will start to reach a death stage and this is where there's more deaths than births. So the population size will start to drop again until it's reached a stage where the resources can handle the population size. Alright guys, let's go take a look at some past papers. Question 33. What can be continuously recycled in ecosystems? Well, we've got carbon energy and water here so which of them can be continuously recycled well we've taken a look at the carbon cycle and we've seen that carbon can definitely be recycled um, energy can also be recycled as we've learned from chapter 20 
Water, however, can't be recycled. The reason water can't be recycled is because water never changes form. Water always stays water. It just moves um, from one area to the next area. So water will take on the forms of liquid, solid or gas, but it never changes into something else other than the H2O molecule. Thus, it doesn't have to be recycled. Carbon and energy though does change forms. Carbon becomes part of different compounds and energy flows throughout the ecosystems. Thus these two can be recycled while water can't be recycled because it never changes the H2O form. So our answer here would be A. Question 34. Which diagram shows a pyramid of biomass for a woodland? Well we know pyramids of biomass are always well in a pyramid shape so this is our only um, pyramid of biomass that has this pyramid shape so our answer will be a question 35 which of the following is an example of a food chain well in a food chain we usually start with the lower levels and we end with our um, secondary consumers so here we've got carnivore, herbivore, producer, so we can rule that one out. Here we've got flower, fruit and seed. That's definitely not a fruit chain. A fruit does not eat a flower. Here we've got grass, antelope and lion. Well that's right because uh, grass is eaten by antelope and the antelope is eaten by the lion. This one we've got starch, maltose and glucose. Again this is not a food chain. This is just different carbohydrates and sugars. So I'll answer your VC. Well that was it for today. Good luck with the studying and go and get those good marks. Red